What is up everybody? This is John with Archer Fish for another video. For another video? With another video. Um, before I go into the video, please do me a favor. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Most importantly, hit the notification button so you get notified every time I release a video so you can be one of the first ones to watch it. That is actually very important if you're watching my channel for fishing reports from local lakes, whether it's Castaic, San Vicente, Casitas, Kachuma, whatever it is. You want to be up to date on fishing reports, which I will try to give you as accurately and as quickly as possible. I try to release a video up to a day, sometimes two days after uh, I go fishing. So you're going to get really up-to-date information. This year, I'm going to try to be filming a lot more videos, a lot of how-to stuff, a lot of gear stuff, breaking down different gear, what I think about it, uh, recommendations, uh, and of course, lots and lots of fishing videos, um, especially uh, where I'm catching fish, how I'm catching fish, and when the bite is on fire at a particular lake like I did last year. So hit the notification thing so make sure that you're up to date so you know if the fish are biting and what they're biting on. Um, also, I'm going to link all the descriptions. Uh, I'm going to link all the products in the description. Okay, so you can click on that stuff. If there's a rod that I recommend that you like, do me a favor and click on the link because it's going to be an affiliate thing and it's good for me. It, 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 if I can make even a little bit of money, and it's it's nothing, it's dozens of dollars, literally. Um, but if I can make something uh, to help with the channel, every dime helps me stay fishing. I spent a lot of money fishing last year uh, using primarily rental boats. As you all know, that could get very expensive. I don't have the money. I am not independently wealthy. I wish that I were. Um, so it is very expensive, so I need to try to um, make up some of those funds. So if you guys find a rod or a reel or, or a, a lure or something that you like, go ahead and hit the uh, the affiliate link down below, and uh, hopefully I get paid from that. Uh, also, I'm going to be trying to get a boat this year, which I'm trying really hard to figure out a way to do it. i got to get a uh, something that can tow it first. And then a boat. I'm looking for storage right now. I'm looking for a lot of different things. So I'm going to try to figure that out so I could give you more videos. I don't have to pay for rental boats. And hopefully you guys will get to go fishing with me. That will be awesome because I meet a lot of you guys when I'm out there from Castaic to San Vicente. I got a lot of subs that are out there and it's really cool to meet you. I would love to fish with you guys. Uh, so I'm going to try to do that this year. That being said, spring is coming. Uh, we are at the end of January. I think tomorrow's February 1st. So the last video was all about the pre-spawn. I'm going to tell you today about the spawn and the equipment that I use, the techniques that I use. Uh, I've got a lot of videos that I'm going to put up in the little thing here uh, as far as spring techniques, actual meat out there catching fish in the spring. So because it's coming up, this is the deal with spring. The bass move up to spawn the last full moon in October, right? Bass move up to spawn the last full moon in March, right? That is the, the natural signifier is that full moon, okay? Whether it is the, the tug of the moon, the light, whatever it is, the... That is the kind of, that's what signifies the spawn. Now, if the water is not the right temperature, I think 60 degrees, they won't spawn. You know, it's not good for the eggs. So typically, especially with Castaic, the bass move up shallow around that time. I mean, they're just like bass anywhere else. But what ends up happening is right around the last week in March, the first week in May, whenever that water temperature hits after the full moon, they end up letting freezing cold aqueduct water, you know, snow melt uh, runoff into the reservoir and it completely destroys the spawn. They, they release so much freezing cold water in there. I and mean, last year it was, they, they dumped in about, you know, five to 10 feet. I forget the exact amount, but I was fishing there and it, they just, once that happens, those fish either stay where they're at but now they have 10 extra feet above them. So let's say they were already at five to 10 feet. Now they're 20 feet, right? Or they just don't spawn at all. So they're either spawning out of sight 
or they don't spawn at all because they need that little sweet spot where they get enough sunlight for the eggs, the water temperature and all that stuff, but not too much sunlight. So that cold water, I mean, it basically destroys the spawn nearly every year. I mean, obviously fish still spawn. Like I said, they probably spawn, you know, a little bit deeper, but it, you're not seeing the beds that you would. I know this because I fished Castaic the spawn for the last like five years, just nonstop. And I would go out in March, April, just as much as humanly possible. And, and waiting to see those patterns, try to find where the fish are, when they're moving up, when they start bedding, when you're catching uh, the big ones and whatever else. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time watching this. So I know exactly when they start spawning and it really is all dependent on that water temperature, you know, and the weather, you know, if you get a lot, I think this happened last year too. We got so much, the, the, the water temperature was getting towards the 60 uh, degree mark. It was getting close to that last full moon in March. And then what happened was we got so much wind. The Santa Ana's kicked in. This year they've already happened. Hopefully that's it for them. But when you're getting all this, the wind pounding the water, pounding the water over a, you know, a week or two period, that's also going to cool things down. So the water cooled off because those winds were crazy for two weeks. So that's going to set it back too, not including when they dump in the freezing cold uh, aqueduct water. So there's a lot of factors that can slow down the spawn and, and, and stop it from happening or at least make it harder uh, to see, you know, a little bit less visible. That being said, when they do eventually spawn, and a lot of times they eventually will, you know, whether it's May, uh, you know, or the end of April, you know, I think May last year, we, we saw a lot of spawning fish. A lot of people were able to just yank them off beds. And I'm, I'm talking specifically uh, Castaic. Uh, I'm not talking about these other lakes. Um, so hang on a second. I did hit Kachuma hard last year because it was, it was the first lake to start offering boat rentals. And so, and I had never been there. So I hit Kachuma hard. I think the first week in April was the first time that I went and it was fantastic. The spawn there was great. Um, that's when I caught my, my giant bass. I'd only been there three trips. So uh, lots of good fish, lots of big fish. Um, it, it's just a bit of a drive. That's really the only drawback um, to that lake in my opinion. Uh, so, Kachuma may spawn kind of on target. I will let you know. I'll, trust me, I'll be the first one down there. I will let you know uh, if, if Kachuma's on. Casitas last year, too. That was really good. That started spawning on target. They don't, I think Casitas is more about the rainfall than anything else. They don't, they're not, I don't think they're connected to the aqueduct, so they don't, they're not letting a bunch of ice cold water in, you know. Um, that's why they had that problem last year with the, or the, previous years with the pH balance, you know, you had all this dying, they had all this rainfall, right? And it grabs all this, uh, you know, covers all these trees and all this foliage and all that stuff dies in the water, which creates this nasty pH balance, which means most of the bass just went deep to where they could thrive, to where the oxygen level was fine and this dead, pardon me, this dead brush and, and all these things is not sucking the oxygen out of the water very, very deep where it's cold. It's, it's more oxygenated down there, so they stay down there. So it was tough fishing for like two years there. Um, but it seems like that is is pretty much gone away. We haven't gotten a lot of rain this year. We've gotten a little bit. So as, as long as we don't get dumped on for the next month, Casitas, uh, the spawn in the springtime could be very good because Casitas, that lake has more, the average fish there from two years ago was 213. And I mean to tell you, me and Juan will go out there, catch, let's say five, 10, 20 fish. They all average 213, you know, and then usually I'd get a kicker about a five, six pounder. Um, uh, this year, it's the same fish, but now they're averaging over three pounds. So let's say three, five or three, six or something. So, and you're still going to get those big ones. Plus it has giants in there if you're throwing a swim bait. So Casitas could be very good this year. There's already shad there. They're, the shad are very hard. It's not like uh, Castaic. The shad fishing there is very, very difficult but they're there, you know, which means the big bass are going to start, you know, moving up pretty soon. So I think it spawns earlier there. Casitas could be very good. Stay tuned to my channel and I will let you know because I will be on the water in Casitas uh, maybe even sooner than uh, March. So there we go. We got our those uh, three spring lakes. As far as these other southern, I don't typically fish pyramid too much unless I hear that it, it's good. Um, 
you know, it, it's okay. It's, it's a little farther. It's a little colder. It's almost always windy at Pyramid. So I tend to not even look at that one unless I just want something new or I've heard about the fishing there being good because it's just very windy. And in a rental boat, that sucks. Uh, Pyru, I've only been there a couple times. It was okay. Um, don't really fish it too often. Um, now, the San Diego lakes that I hit hard last year, uh, San Vicente, one of my favorites. Fished it all the time. That is probably going to be a very good spring bite as well. There's only a few places that are shallow water there. That's what's interesting. Is So if you're looking to get uh, spawning bass and bedding bass at San Vicente, there's only a couple spots, which is good. That means like you can target in uh, very little areas, fish them very hard and catch some big fish. Um, I, I caught a lot of good, almost bulk of my six pounders were all caught down there. I've lost some really big fish down there as well. Seen some really big ones. It is a fantastic lake. The major drawback with Vicente, though, is it is deep, and you've got about 20 feet a lot of times, if not more, of just trees, massive trees. Not like Castaic, where there's like little branches and little shrubs and tiny little trees everywhere that can be annoying and they can snag, especially if you're drop shotting. San Vicente, almost everything is surrounded by underwater, I mean, giant trees, 20 footers. You can look down there when it's clear and just see these massive 20 foot, you know, trees. And it is ridiculous because if you're not on, on it with your bait, especially if you're Sanko fishing, drop shot fishing, you're going to get snagged so many times. It is a very frustrating lake. It's just worth it because it's such a great fishery. Um, and the la the fish there are very aggressive. I'm going to get into those fish too later on in another video because the top water bite down there, it's night and day uh, versus Castaic. Uh, some positives, some negatives, but the fish are just very aggressive down there. Uh, so anyway, Ote I fished. Uh, I fished a, a bunch of other lakes down there. I am planning on hitting some of these other ones uh, in the springtime just to kind of see what they're like. Poway, uh, Ote, um, let's see what else, probably Diamond Valley. Uh, that was just out of the way, um, but you know, I got to try it. I've been there a few times in springtime. I've seen the biggest fish I've ever seen in the wild, aside from a couple big ones at Castaic, but probably the biggest that I've ever seen up close in the wild was at Diamond Valley Lake. It was easily 15 pounds, if not more. It could have been more. It's hard to judge when you see it that big in the water, but it was massive. So I may, I may check out Diamond Valley. So anyway, for the springtime fishing, and this is the spawn. When things really heat up, this is the gear that I use. All right. 